One point that interests me about the consequences of activities carried on under the sign of sexual health concerns this very complex question of whether sexuality nowadays is being medicalized or, if you like, pharmaceuticalized. Our content analysis revealed the, the relative dominance of biomedical and public health understandings of sexual health, and those are understandings that also find their way into governing projects as well. Um, but if you think back to that earliest definition by the WHO that I showed you, they moved emphatically beyond the biomedical, even beyond the more expansive vocabulary of public health, to create a conceptual space for linking sexual health to personal agency and freedom, pursuit of pleasure perhaps as an end in itself. And a lot of subsequent definitions and projects have at least paid lip service to that goal. Nowadays, there's also a diverse range of non-credentialed sexual health experts who offer advice, products, therapies, and treatments. So I think the meanings of sexual health remain open to cultural redefinition and to political contestation. And I'm thinking it would be a mistake to too quickly read the invention of sexual health as the triumph of biomedicine or public health or the global pharmaceutical industry in colonizing the sexual. It may be that sexual health has become too heterogeneous and uncontainable for any single set of actors or organizations to completely own the term. Earlier I said that in discourses of sexual health, sexuality was being passed through this filter of health. But maybe a better metaphor is that of, is, is, excuse me, maybe a better metaphor is that of a prism. When sexuality is refracted through the prism of health, that seems to open up broad avenues for scientific and practical action and creates a, a, a wealth of possibilities for the development of new initiatives, expertise, organizational infrastructure. So maybe sexual health sometimes means the confining of sex within a medical framework and especially a pharmaceutical approach. But maybe it's also an opening up of many different ways of thinking about studying and addressing sex. I, I guess I wonder about, um, it seems like, the, like the, the concept of sexual health would allow for certain kinds of discussions of pleasure, pleasure that's basically good for you or within the context of long-term marriage or, or moderate, right? Yeah. Um, whereas um, it seems like, and, it's, and it does, it, there seems to be a kind of slippage between sort of sexual being as a kind of sense of the whole person mm -hmm. to sexual well-being and the whole happiness discourse that has grown is part of the healthization, I think, yeah. um, right? Yeah. That sort of positive as preven prevention versus positive as like positive um, psychology movement. And so I kind of kept hearing those, you know, I mean, I just, that, I think that's maybe the broad, you know, part of what's packaged in with the concept of health, but it seems like pleasure Pleasure can mean a lot of different things now. Um, and, you know, I, I do think gay marriage kind of pushes some of these points to say, like, gay people are stigmatized for being pleasure addicts, but now they can have, like, appropriate levels of pleasure meted out <laughs> like other married people. Right. <coughs> right? And so I, I think yeah, that that's yeah. pleasure, it seems, is double edged right. in that sense. I think it's a great point. I mean, it really helps me to, you know, I think to articulate one of the points that I'm making here, you know, which, so it, it to, to say that it's sort of a choice between, you know, like the pharmacological versus, you know, the, the pleasure-seeking approaches is, is, you know, is, is just way oversimplified. Um, be, and what we need to do is imagine how um, these, within these discourses of sexual health we find intertwined these various new conceptions and old conceptions of pleasure and health and science and so forth all you know, interlinked in producing these new assemblages. And so, yes, um, what is pleasure? Uh, pleasure can mean many different things, and you're right. Some of them get authorized and validated, and others don't. Some of them make sense within a discourse of health and the DSM, and others yeah. stand outside of it as transgressive or weird or whatever. Um, and um, it's not that there is a clear sort of vantage point from which one then kind of possesses the um, the outside of stands on outside of sexual health and says you know and, and, and rejects that or you know I, I, so I, you know it's it's not the you know like the body and its pleasures versus the whole you know power knowledge pleasure repressive apparatus or something like that right it's it's this weird intertwining of these things that actually makes it very difficult to figure out 
what to defend, and how to intervene politically.